Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Naresh P, consultant pediatrician, Manipal Hospital, Malayshuram, Bangalore. Uh, today, I'll be discussing a very simple and easy topic, but uh, that is confused by most of the uh, very educated and I would call them the Google parents who use a lot of Google and trust Google more than the doctors. Uh, we'll just discuss about two common symptoms that is fever and cough. Fever and cough in children, pediatric age group, what parents should do, when they should react, when to consult the doctor. <clears throat> the slides are very few, it will be more of an explanation so that you people can understand. See, first understanding what is fever, uh, this is from my personal OPD experience. See, staying in a city, you cannot come to the doctor and tell, uh, I felt the baby is warm, I touched the baby on the forehead and I felt the baby is warm. That is not the expected thing from somebody who is staying in the city. You are supposed to use the thermometer and actually measure the child's temperature when you come to the doctor. Let us say you are staying in a far off rural place, Illadru Dura village alidira, thermometer illa, then it is acceptable that you can tell, I touched the baby on the neck, I felt the baby is warm, it's fine. But when you report to the doctor in the city, make sure you are monitoring the temperature over the last 12 hours or 24 hours. Is the fever more in the morning time and night time or is it there continuously? The duration of the fever, the highest point where the fever touches 101, 102, these are important. See, first moving on to the definition of fever in a child. Easy method to record in a smaller child would be to place the thermometer in the armpit. Again, I repeat, it should be placed inside the armpit. Let us say this is the child's armpit. So, you are supposed to place it in the armpit and bring the arm close by. Not like this. If you place it like this, then the mercury end of the thermometer will point backwards. So, you are going to get a wrong reading. So, how to measure in the armpit? Place the mercury end of the thermometer into the armpit and bring his arms close by. If possible, place it for 2 minutes. It is easier said than done. But at least for 1 complete minute or even 90 seconds would be fair enough to get the temperature right. Now, understanding what is fever in a child. Suppose you are measuring it in the armpit, then anything above 99, 99.2, 99.4, all this is called as fever in a child. 98.6 will not be considered as fever. Even if the child feels warm, you recheck the temperature, 98, 98.6, 97, this is not fever. Why I am stressing on this? Because especially during the recent COVID times, I had many patients who take an online consultation telling that the child had fever for two days. Then I would ask, did you record it? Then they would tell it's 97, 98. Come on, that is not at all fever. It is unnecessary panic in the family. So, above 99 Fahrenheit is fever in a child in the armpit. Now, coming to an older child, you are going to measure the temperature in the mouth if feasible, place the thermometer below the tongue and tell the child to close the mouth, I mean older child, more than 9 years or 10 years, otherwise go by the armpit. Now in the oral cavity, the temperature that is to be called as fever will be 100 degrees or more. So again you are going to place it for 1 minute or at least 90 seconds to 2 minutes. Ideally, one minute is enough. Now, I repeat again, 99 degrees or more in the armpit, 100 degrees or more in the oral cavity. Uh, you can just have a look at these small diagrams where it is mentioned how to record the temperature. Next, after seeing this, coming to the danger signs in fever. When you are going to come to the doctor and when can you wait? 
why I am stressing on this point is most of our night casualty visits that is parents, grandparents, uncle, auntie, all of you might have experienced when a child has fever even at night 1 or 2 o'clock you will all go running to the hospital. So is it really needed? Do you really have to panic that way? See for this you need to understand a few points. When is it an emergency? When is it not an emergency? That means when a child, let us say the child is 5 years old and the child has fever. When you need to rush to the hospital, suppose you record the fever in the night at around 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock, is it really an emergency or not? And when can you actually wait? That is, you can wait till the next day morning, take an appointment and go to the doctor. So these two things has to be very clear, the parents and the attenders have to understand this. Now let us say you are recording a temperature at 11 o'clock in the night, the child feels a little warm. First we will discuss when it is not an emergency, that is you can rest, wait at home, consult the doctor next day morning. So these are the points to keep in mind. The child is active, playing around, the fever is not interfering with his routine activities. This is a happy sign, although he has 99 or 100 fever, he is active and running around, it is good. Next, his oral intake is good, activity is good, water intake is good. More than 75 percent of the normal, let us say the child eats normally 3 idlis with some amount of sambar or chutney. He is eating 2 idlis with sambar and chutney and drinking 2 glasses of water. That is good enough, you can wait. So an active child, routine activities are normal, oral intake, solids and liquids is good. And most important thing, urine output is good. A child who is passing at least one time urine in 6 hours, that is in 24 hours he passes 4 to 6 times urine, it is not an emergency. You can always wait for 12 hours, do some tippet sponging and visit the doctor next day morning. I repeat, child is active, routine activity is normal, feeding well, sleep is well urine output is good, it is not an emergency, you can consult the doctor the next day morning. Now when is it an emergency, the child has fever and when you need to actually rush to the hospital or rush to the emergency room, this is very important. Let us say the child has 100 degrees fever, his activity is disturbed, he becomes dull, he is just lying down, not responding much routine activity is totally disturbed, that is the first point. Second point, even after putting the fever medication, let us say you have taken an on the phone consultation, doctor has told you a prescribed dosage of medicine, you have given the medicine. Still if the child after giving the medicine also, he is unresponsive, he continues to lie down, then it is a worry, it is an emergency. Next food intake and water intake is reduced to less than 50 percent of normal. Let us say he has 4 idlis, 2 glasses of water. He is able to take just 2 idlis and 1 glass of water. It is an emergency. You cannot carry on with a child having just 50 percent of water intake and food intake. You need to go to the hospital. Next, urine output is decreasing to less than 2 times in 12 hours. That is. Let us say the child developed fever today morning, it is a Sunday. From morning 9 till night 9, he has passed only one urine and the tool yellow in color, just 100 ml. It is an emergency, do not wait till Monday morning, make him dehydrated. You go immediately to the emergency room and take the necessary treatment. So I repeat again, when is it an emergency, dull, lethargic child, activity is reducing, oral intake becomes less than 50 percent urine output becomes just once in 12 hours and dark yellow urine, these all indicate the child is going in for dehydration. And other than this, child has uncontrollable shivering, abnormal body movements, lethargy, uprolling of eyes, these are all quite obvious, you need to, you, you will rush to the hospital immediately. So next. When are you going to treat the fever, see as far as possible staying in the city, any symptom it is better to consult the doctor. Why I am repeating this again, 
because most of my patients what they do they would have come to me at 3 months of age and for a certain weight i would have given the fever dosage as 0.5 ml or 1 ml for example then the child will get fever when he is 1 year and 5 months old they will put that old dosage of 1 ml for 3 days and they will come to the doctor telling fever has not reduced see you cannot put fever medicine of a 4 kg child to a child who is 12 kg it's not going to work so in simple language if you are in doubt consult your doctor usually we put 15 mg per kg per dose i repeat it is 15 mg per kg per dose that is the dosage of the fever medicine let us say the child is 10 kg 15 into 10 150 mg of paracetamol morning 150 mg in the afternoon and 150 mg in the night this is the dosage of the fever medicine but again i repeat please consult your doctor and put the right dosage only then the fever is going to come down so i hope you have just understood the basics of what is called as fever in a child when is it an emergency when to rush to the doctor when you can wait and consult the doctor the next day and uh, about the fever medication consult your doctor put the right dosage next we'll talk about another common symptom in the pediatric age group that is cough see it is quite troublesome cough uh, with my personal experience the patients that i have seen uh, a coughing child not only causes lot of distress to the child but it will also cause lot of problem to the entire family lack of sleep stress parents grandparents a sibling everybody is disturbed some of the patients will call and they will ask uh, doctor my child has been coughing for the past uh, one day you please give me cough syrup <laughs> uh, it is not like going to some gold shop and paying them 5000 rupees and purchasing one gram of gold see there are different types of cough and uh, actually for cough we have to auscultate the child know the history how the cough started and how the cough is progressing to give the treatment there are different types of cough syrup four to five types of cough syrup are there so a different type of cough syrup which is not given correctly will cause more harm to the child to understand this see the common types of origin of cough in the child cough can originate from a problem in the nose cough can originate from a problem in the throat cough can originate from the problem in the lungs it's a simple concept three different origins of cough can be there it can be the nose throat or even the lung but for most attenders it is throat they don't think of anything else if the child is having a chronic cold negdi idre continuous cold what happens is there is something called as post nasal drip so when the child sleeps down the discharge from the nose keeps going backwards and after half an hour of sleep he start coughing and he'll get up this continues the whole night it is called cough associated with post nasal drip there is actually no problem in the throat but because of the discharge from the nose that goes to the throat when the child sleeps he keeps coughing he is all right when he sits because the discharge comes front so this is one type of cough next type of cough is irritation in the throat what we call pharyngitis tonsillitis you drink some uh, a fruit juice in an unhygienic shop next day you develop a rough throat that is sore throat and cough that cough originates in the throat and next type of cough is cough that originates from the lung it is seen in asthmatic individuals wheezing pneumonia in which high fever is there productive cough comes out from deep within now each type of cough that i mentioned about cough originating from the nose throat cough and cough originating from the lung their treatment is different if the child has cough due to cold you need to give medicines to control the cold you cannot give a cough suppressant that time and similarly if you have cough that originates from the lung treatment is totally different so whenever the child is having a cough the aim of this talk is please don't take online consultation 
you visit the doctor maybe even after a day cough doesn't become an emergency unless it is asthma wheezing pneumonia so cough mild cough is there for one day next day you consult the doctor then take medication for the cough don't take online consultation if the child has a cough the chest has to be auscultated throat has to be seen and only then we have to give the medicine so i hope this talk was helpful at least to manage fever and cough in children what you can do at home so if you all parents grandparents siblings found this helpful you please do share it with your relatives and friends so that it does help even their children that is one thing and uh, the second point if you have any doubts please type it in the inbox so that we can get back to you as soon as possible okay wishing you all good health thank you